Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase So we are again here with the series for essential Theravada Buddhism or beginner Buddhism or beginner Theravada Buddhism. We had talked uh, a little bit about an introduction and why we need to talk about beginner topics and how we can talk about these things again and again and again and we should bring them to mind again and again and again. We also talked about Namo Tassa, Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. This is the number one chant that any monk will be chanting because it just happened so many times before every single Dhamma talk or before his chanting, uh, so many uh, cases, sometimes even before confession, some monks, they, they insist on, on doing uh, Namo Tassa. And Namo Tassa is the shorthand for that. So we did the Namo Tassa because one is the most uh, important uh, or popular or recited uh, chant in Theravada Buddhism. What is number two? So number two would be uh, ETB So. This is uh, the chant to describe the Buddha's qualities. This is sometimes we call it the nine qualities, the nine qualities of the of the Buddha. Now there's nine qualities, but there are actually uh, th three qualities, the first three qualities that we d discussed in Namo Tassa are actually part of the nine qualities. So we really only have to cover six new topics today, but we will be talking about the total of nine qualities because uh, like I said before, you can, you might be able to uh, remember or you might have forgotten and so for that reason we just do things again and again and again and remind ourselves uh, what are the qualities, uh, what are these teachings. Like I said before, we chant, uh, we chant this many, many times uh, every day, sometimes a couple times per day. Uh, actually on the way to, um, on the way this morning uh, to alms, I was chanting this, also the Metta Sutta. So uh, it's, it's done again and again and again because we want to bring these qualities to mind. And so listening to a Dhamma talk like this again and again and again is very important. Uh, whether you know it or whether you do not know uh, the exact details that are covered in this Dhamma talk, you can skip to maybe this part right now uh, where I describe what ETP so uh, Bhagava is a little in a, in a little bit I'll just dis discuss that but we want to talk about uh, Ratana so we're going to talk about uh, the three uh, the triple gem this is the Buddha the Dhamma and the Sangha and we have a, it's called the Ratana is a gem a gem is something that is useful, it's valuable, it's sought after, it's useful, and you can do many things with it. Like gold, silver, diamonds, rubies. These are precious metals, precious gems. And uh, they... Uh, they can uh, be something that cannot be taken away from you. So if you have gold or, 
or a diamond, someone can rob you of these uh, items. If you bury them, someone can dig them up. There could be an earthquake and they can be removed or moved from there. A thief could take them. But when you really take a triple gem, when you take a refuge, then it is up to you to keep these precious gems within you. They can offer refuge. And so we have a triple gem. We also have a sarana. We have ratana and we have a sarana. So the triple gem is the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. And the threefold refuge, t is is refuge. It's like a shelter. It's like a house that protects you from the elements. So you take refuge in the triple gem. Many times before you will take the five precepts, you actually say, ti sarane na saha pancha silam ya cha mi anugaham katwa silam deta me bande. So you're saying, ti sarane na saha pancha silam ya cha mi. You're saying, with the three refuges, with the re three refuges, triple gem, with the three re refuges in triple gem. Uh, please give the five, I'm asking for the five precepts. This is something when you go to a monk, when you go to a monastery and you make a donation, usually you will say that phrase, you will take triple gem, you will take the five precepts in order to uh, reset or redetermine your, your determination to follow the teachings of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, to take refuge in those, and to also follow uh, some of the most basic uh, instructions for lay people to follow the five precepts. This is not to, not to kill, not to steal, not to engage in sexual misconduct, not to lie, and not to take intoxicating substances. You want to reaffirm this determination that you will follow these five rules when you take triple refuge. Buddhang saranang gachami, dhammang saranang gachami, sanghang saranang gachami. So you're taking refuge in the Buddha, you're taking refuge in the Dhamma, and you're taking refuge in the Sangha. Actually, it's I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dhamma, I take refuge in the Sangha. So these are things that you say all the time when you go to the monastery. You should be going to the monastery. You should not be relying on videos as a replacement for going to the monastery, relying on videos as a replacement for taking refuge in front of a monk. And you should not be relying on videos as a replacement for taking five precepts in front of a monk. And so this is a very, very important. But sometimes you cannot go and there's only the videos. The videos became very popular during the COVID time. And uh, studios were formed and uh, video lectures were made at lot of many monasteries because people could not come to the monasteries for two reasons. They didn't want to get infected by other people and also they didn't want to uh, have uh, the infections go to the monks. So our monastery, when I was in Myanmar, it was total lockdown. We didn't, we didn't have anyone come to the monastery. And so during that time, it, it served as a replacement uh, for going to the monastery. Of course, 
also just spreading the disease in general. But it's very important to, to come to the monastery. And so, if you do chanting with the monks, you will say, Namo Tassa. And you will also say, ETP so pagewar ham samma sambuddho vinja charana sambano sugeto loka vidu anuttaro purisadam sarati satha deva manusanam buddho bhagavati. Hopefully, this is familiar to you in some way or another. These are the nine qualities of the Buddha. In the Namo Tassa, Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sammasambuddhase, these three qualities are also part of the nine qualities of the Buddha. The Bhagava, let's review. The, the grammar is a little different though. Bhagavato is now Bhagava. So Bhagava is the blessed one or the fortunate one. Arham, the worthy one. Greed, hatred, and delusion are permanently removed. Samma Sambuddho, the fully self-enlightened one. I had talked about how long in samsara the bodhisattva has gone and that we should know the difference between an arhant and a Buddha, a Samma Sambuddho, whenever we say Buddha, we really mean Samma Sambuddho. Sometimes if we say something different, like a Pacheka Buddha, a Buddha who does not teach, then, then we usually say Pacheka Buddha. But when we say Buddha, we just say Buddha. We, we often uh, do not say Samma Sambuddho, but because there are so many different teachings, so many different traditions, that somehow, uh, sometimes I, I think they shortcut what a Buddha is, then we have to say Samma Sambuddho. But in our tradition, we live in our own bubble. We just say Buddha. It means, it means Samma Sambuddho. An Arhant is, uh, an Arhant is one who is fully enlightened. They have greed, hatred, and delusion permanently removed, it don't come back. And these are the causes for rebirth. So an arhant does not get born again. An arhant, we could say more accurately, the five khandas do not arise again and there is nothing, nothing else, nothing else than those five khandas that make up what we what we refer to as a self, but there is no self. They arise and pass away, arise and pass away, every moment to moment. But when the death moment happens, there's no more arising. As some people believe that you, the soul goes somewhere, somewhere that it can't go, some special place, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. There is no soul in Buddhism, Theravada Buddhism. And the uh, what we wrongly perceive as a soul is actually the five khandas. We could, we could say that mind and matter, the five khandas also includes matter. But uh, we, we will talk about the five khandas, nama, rupa, mind and matter, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but uh, as I said, we wrongly taking a self these are the five khandas. The Samma Sambuddho is also an arhat. But the Buddha, and we're just calling him a Buddha now, uh, the Buddha is very special, and we will be talking about uh, the qualities of the Buddha that are very special to, let's say, an arhat, who is usually, when we say an arhat, we don't usually refer to the Buddha as an arhat. We refer to an arhat as a disciple who has attained the teachings to the fullest level, who has extinguished all his defilements permanently, and they do not come back. And by that reason, when he dies, there is no more 
re-arising of the five khandas after, immediately after the death moment. For regular people, for those who are not enlightened, they, for sure, it is bound to happen another life, another, uh, another set of five khandas in, 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 in most cases, unless you have a, a special type of samadhi. These types, these five khandas will re-arise again. The Buddha, when we call the Buddha an arhat, we also say he is permanently destroyed Greed, hatred, and delusion, he will not arise again as well, we say that. But he's a very special, and it takes a long time for a bodhisattva, double T, no V, bodhisattva. For the bodhisattva to become a Buddha, even after he gets this prediction, he must go through samsara and training and developing his parami even further. Originally, his parami is enough to become enlightened, but he wants to go further. He wants to be special, a special, special enlightened person who can teach like no other, who can set the Dhamma wheel in motion when it is not present. So this is uh, the Bhagava, the Arham, the Sammasambhuto, the Blessed One, the Worthy One, because he has a greed, hatred, and delusion permanently destroyed, and the Samasambhuto, the one who is fully self-enlightened, he has no other teacher. So, we could say that uh, for each of these qualities, we say because of this reason, he is the Arham. Because of this reason, he is the Samasambhuto. Because of this reason, he is the Bhagava the Arham, and the Sammasambuddho. And all of them, the nine qualities. So, iti so Bhagava Arham Sammasambuddho Vinja Charana Sambhano Sugeto Loka Vidu Anuttaro Purise Dhamma Sarati Satta Deva Manusanam Buddho Bhagavati so because of all these reasons, because of all these reasons, then this is how we get the, the gem of the Buddha. Vijja charana sampano. This means uh, endowed with knowledge and conduct. How do we explain these things? They are very, the list gets very long. If I list them, maybe you'll get confused. But I will list them anyways, in brief or in groups. I'll call them, well, we can, we can call them, actually the texts call them as the eight types of knowledges. We have six direct knowledges together with insight and the supernormal power of the mind-made body. I'll uh, skip over <laughs> what, this, what these are. But uh, they, are, they are the knowledges, and they are the psychic powers. And the Buddha has, has these. And for conduct, there are 15 types of charana. And maybe we can have a class on this as well. Restraint in virtue, guarding the sense faculties, knowledge of the right amount of food for eating, devotion to wakefulness, the seven good states, the four jhanas and the fine material sphere. The seven good states, the faith, conscience, shame, learning, energy, mindfulness, and understanding. Whew. All these lists, they will go in one ear, out the other. But the main thing that you need to know is that The Buddha has the knowledge, and the Buddha has perfect conduct. Vijja charana sampanno. Vijja is knowledge, and charana is conduct. Sampanno, 
is endowed with. Sugito. Sugito means well gone. Well gone, he's fulfilled his purpose in life. And as we say, he has entered Parinibbana. What we mean by entered Parinibbana? Can we talk to the Buddha? Can we talk to him in Parinibbana? Can he appear to us? Can he appear to us and, and give us teachings in Parinibbana? Can we meditate? Can we, can we see other previous Buddhas who are living in Parinibbana? No. <laughs> this is an expression. There are no more five khandhas. So when we say entered Parinibbana, we say that the five khandhas uh, became extinguished and they did not arise again. Another meaning for sugato is well spoken. Loka we do. Loka we do is another quality. It is nor of the worlds. The world, the Buddha knows that the world of samsara does not end unless, unless one reaches nibbana. Parinibbana, to extinguish the five khandhas and for them not to arise again after death. We also have a tiloka. Loka we do, what it, what it could also mean tiloka, knowing the three worlds. The sankara loka, this is the conditioned world. Mind and matter and patichu samapada, the dependent origination. The Satta Loka, the world of beings, these are the 31 planes of existence. <coughs> and uh, lastly, we have Okasa Loka, the world of space. So this is the uh, T Loka, and uh, the Buddha has full knowledge of this. Next quality, Anuttaro Purisiddhamma Sarati. Incomparable is Anuttaro. Purisiddhamma Sarati is the trainer of those who are tameable. When we talk about the Buddha having these qualities, He can train those who are actually not, are perceived as not trainable. We have a very famous story. We have s several stories where the Buddha was able to tame those who were perceived as uh, impossible to train. We have several stories of these where other people gave up but actually those who come in contact with the Buddha actually have incredible parami, incredible uh, qualities uh, that they have developed uh, through so many lifetimes, so many lifetimes in samsara. And we have the story of Angulimala, one who was very fierce. Actually, he was born as a himsaka in the Kosala kingdom. And uh, Ahimsaka, of all, of all the names he, he was named originally, uh, means uh, harmless, the one who is harmless, one who, who is harmless towards others. He was bright, he was a compassionate student, um, but he was deceived by his, his peers. And the teacher, um, the teacher actually became afraid of Angulimala. It. And uh, he demanded that uh, Angulimala collect 1,000 human fingers due to this deception. And, and this, is, this is terrible. It's terrible for a teacher to request this, to demand this. And Ahimsaka, one who is harmless, then became known as Angulimala. 
one who wears a garland of fingers or several. Oh, the children, they love this, they love this story or they become afraid of this story. So the teacher demanded a thousand human fingers due to this deception. He was uh, afraid of his, of his student and he came up with that plan. And Ahimsaka, who was nonviolent, the one who was named nonviolence, harmlessness, became known as Angulimala. He wore a garland of fingers. He would kill the victim and as his trophy, he would cut off the finger and wear it around his neck. And he wanted to collect a thousand, a thousand of these fingers. He turned into the greatest feared murderer, wearing the victim's fingers as his necklace. Can you imagine that? Back then, you know, the, um, they didn't have communication and they didn't have law enforcement like they really do now. And so it's possible that uh, someone as evil as this could go around killing, killing and killing many, many people. The Buddha, he's uh, around the area of Angulimala. He knows that uh, Angulimala will be able to become enlightened. And he's not afraid of Angulimala. And Angulimala sees the Buddha, and he says, this will be my 1,000th victim. Because he already collected 999 fingers. Only one finger each. <laughs> and the Buddha was walking, 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 just a uh, you know, very, very uh, normal pace, maybe a little slow. And Angulimala was trying to catch him. He was walking very fast. But the Buddha was walking very slowly and calmly. And he asked the Buddha to stop. He, he commanded him, stop. <laughs> and the Buddha, the Buddha says, I have stopped, Angulimala. But it is you who have not stopped. What was he saying? Was he talking about walking? Was he talking about stopping walking? No, he was, he was talking about stopping uh, harming all living beings, becoming an ascetic, becoming a Buddha, and stopping, we could say, samsara. Angulimala, he became, uh, he, he came to his senses, we could say. He had remorse, he throws away his weapons and he asks for forgiveness. And then he went forth as a Buddhist monk. Just like that. This is about training those who are able to be trained. And so Angulimala, he actually became an Arhant. He became an Arhant and he became fully enlightened, no greed, no hatred, no delusion. But uh, the people in the local village, they could recognize him and they started, to, they started to hurt him. And the Buddha says, you know, just deal with it. It's your past karma. The, the uh, arahant does not escape the karma that can come back to him in this life. He can die and this uh, karma doesn't have a chance to... Uh, have its effects after death. But uh, because he had done so many bad things, even though he was fully enlightened, people started to hurt him. And uh, he, he was sent one day to help a, a woman who is in, in terrible pain during childbirth. And he made a prayer of his, he made a moment of truth to help her, her pain go away. 
that uh, since his noble birth he hasn't uh, harmed any living being. Angulimala. So this embodies the teachings of the Buddha. And this is the training of those who are able to be trained. So I hope that you can also come across the teachings of the Buddha and use this as inspire, inspiration. So may I be one who can be tamed. The, the best way is to get rid of the greed, hatred, and delusion, to remove all the negative states of mind permanently, to try that, to do that, and to accomplish that. Satta Deva Manusanam is another quality. Satta is the teacher. Deva are the devas, the heavenly beings. And uh, Manusa, the teachers of devas and men, we say, or people, humans. And so the, the devas come to the Buddha, they ask questions like we have the Mangala Sutta, maybe we can talk about that. There is also another monk uh, doing a series of the Mangala Sutta, a very in-depth study of the Mangala Sutta in which uh, the Buddha taught the devas about uh, what is the highest blessing. Buddha, this is another quality. It means the awakened one. We have a Pali phrase for this, but I'm going to translate it for you, just give you the English translation. Since he himself understood the Four Noble Truths and also awakened other beings to them, therefore, for reasons such as these, he is called the Buddha. So awakened is understanding the Four Noble Truths and uh, for a Buddha, a Sammasambuddha, he is able to bring others to understand the Four Noble Truths. And we'll talk about this later. We can't talk about everything at once. The Bhagava. The Bhagava is uh, mentioned uh, Itibiso Bhagava and uh, at the very end Buddha Bhagavati. So it's mentioned twice. It's the blessed one, the fortunate one. We have uh, the conclusion to this talk. We have the... So to summarize everything, we have the verse. We have the meaning. We talked about the meaning. We talked about why it's important. So we have the verse, ETV so Bhagavad Arham Sammasambhuto. We talked about the English meaning of this. We talked about why it's important. Well, it's the Buddha. You're taking refuge, buddhang saranaṅga chami. It's also, uh, you know, as the triple gem and the three refuges. So it's, it's very important. And also you can practice the Buddha's qualities, buddha nusati. It's a type of meditation. It's very important. Itipi so bhagavad arham sammasam buddho. Vinja charana sambano sugeto loka vidu. Anuttero purisedam sariti. Satha deva manusanam buddho bhagavati. Maybe you can remember some of the terms in this Dhamma lecture that I gave to you today. Itipi so, such as he. Bhagava Araham Sammasambuddho, the blessed one, the worthy one, the perfect, self enlightened Sambuddho. Vidya Charana Sambano Sugeto Loka Vidu, the one who is endowed with understanding and good conduct. He's well gone and knower of the worlds. Anuttero Purisedam Sariti, the unsurpassed guide for those who need 
the training or taming, who are able to be tamed. Sata deva manusanam buddho bhagavati. The teacher of gods and men, the Buddha and the Blessed One. Bhagavati, the T is actually uh, like an end quote character to let you know that this is a quote. So you can uh, see this uh, quote the Buddha talks about himself. He talks about the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha in uh, several places. We have a paritta about this. So you, I hope that you can uh, understand these qualities. Understand that it's the second most widely chanted verse in Pali that the monks do. I have this on my website. I have um, some of the most basic uh, Pali chants to learn. If you, if you just Google uh, the most basic Pali ch chants to learn, the Pali chants to learn, uh, then uh, Google will bring you to my webpage. Actually, not many people have, have a, a webpage titled with some of the most essential uh, Pali chants. Of course, this is on it. It's number two. In terms of popularity and monks uh, chanting and routinely chanting, uh, this would be number two. It is also called the practice of Buddha Nusati. We have uh, many monks with uh, uh, beads, not Anguli Mala, but uh, just a regular Mala. And uh, people count the beads. And uh, so usually uh, they, they, they do the Itipiso Bhagava Arham Samma Sambuddho, and they, they chant the whole thing, one bead. And again, Itipiso, and the whole thing, another bead. Like this, they, they chant and chant and chant and do a whole round of beats on a one, we say, mala. There are 108 beads, but we only count as 100. That's just what we do. And I hope that you can take these teachings and use it as your refuge. Let's chant one more time. Itipi so bhagavad ham samma sambuddho Vinja charana sambano sugato loka vidu Anuttero purisadam sarati Satta deva manusanam buddho bhagavati so I hope that you can, of course, take refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, that you can request refuge from a monk in person. You can understand the Ratana, the value of the triple gem. We will cover the other Dhamma and the Sangha so that we have Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. And then we will go over uh, some other key points. Uh, mostly, we'll, we'll probably talk about uh, the 10 courses of wholesome action. We'll probably talk about some other things first. Yeah, we'll talk uh, maybe about the, Buddha, the Buddha's relics and uh, how a refuge is, is broken and some other related items. So I hope that you can use uh, these teachings to calm down your, your mind and to reduce the defilements so that with this calm mind you can see the Four Noble Truths with wisdom, seeing that uh, all conditioned matter arises and passes away that is anicca, dukkha, and anatta. To see it as impermanent suffering and non-self so that you can reach nibbana safely and quickly. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.